Hi and welcome to Moms on a Mission. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button below. Also hit that bell notification so you know when we upload a video. Uh, yesterday I did a video in Luke 1 and uh, that was where the angel Gabriel came uh, to tell Mary or Miriam that she was going to be having a son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I just felt like I wanted to continue on um, in Luke this morning and maybe even for the rest of the week beginning uh, this is Luke 1 beginning with verse 39 so grab your coffee or whatever it is you need um, this morning and let's just listen deeply to God's Word now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth and Elizabeth, um, that is her cousin, and she is the one that is going to be having John the Baptist. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And this is because Elizabeth... Um, having the Holy Spirit in her, by the power of God, she knew that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was in Mary's womb, that Mary was blessed, that she had found favor with God, and was going to be the mother of the Savior of the world. I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> Just, uh, it's so hard to even fathom. Um, I, I can imagine the excitement that they were feeling uh, when this was all happening. Uh, then she spoke, oh, I'm sorry, um, but why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is he who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit is rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And here, you know, Mary, she understands that she is uh, God's maidservant. Um, and although all the nations will call her blessed, she is not the Savior, and we are not to worship her. We are not to bow down to her, and we are not to pray to her. So uh, Jesus is our intercessor, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. God living inside of us is our intercessor to our Heavenly Father. Uh, Jesus, the Son of God, came in the flesh. He is our Savior. He is our only Redeemer and salvation, God himself. Uh, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. And this right here, this is just so um, relevant today with all the celebrities and people that have tons and tons of money and everything that you could possibly, you know, want in this world and then they're still committing suicide because there's something missing um, that, uh, you know, only Jesus can fill and it's just, uh, you know, it's really, really sad to see and we need to keep um, everyone in our prayers. Um, but. Sorry, that just reminded me of that. Um, let's see. He has helped us, his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary retained with her about three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by his, uh, the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. 
But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he should call what I'm sorry, what he would have called him. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Um, so this is God clearly uh, telling them to name this child John that Elizabeth has birthed. Um, and of course this is John the Baptist, and he is the one that comes to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. And remember, um, he had become mute, so... Um, now he's able to speak because this has been fulfilled, like God said. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill of Judea, and all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Um, I want to go ahead and end it right there, and that's verse uh, 66. And we'll continue on tomorrow, but um, this is such an exciting book. I... I I love the whole Bible, but you know, sometimes there's just particular books that just have, I don't know, they're just special to you, a little more special or something, or you just relate to them better, or you can understand them better, and uh, Revelation being one of those, but um, out of the Gospels, Luke is just my absolute favorite. I, I love reading Luke over and over again, and especially this time of year, so with it, um, you know, being almost Christmas, and and everything. So I hope that this word has been a blessing and tomorrow we will get back into the book of Luke and maybe by the end of the week we'll finish up, um, you know, heading into the birth of Jesus and um, getting ready to celebrate his birthday at Christmas time. And for those of you that say, well, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th and, you know, it's a pagan holiday and all these things, Okay, no, you need to, you know, do your research and, you know, go through your history and all that. We understand that Jesus probably wasn't born on December 25th, but that is the day that we have chosen to celebrate his birth, um, to celebrate our Lord and Savior, just a, an extra day of, you know, festivities and an extra day of celebration to our God, to the Savior of the world, and uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We celebrate Him every single day of the year, but there's nothing wrong with having an extra celebration that is dedicated to our Lord and Savior Jesus. I hope you have a blessed day, and God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Shalom. Bye.